brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Hello and welcome to Sip, Suds, and Smokes. I am your host, good old boy Mike, and I thought I'd just take a moment and chat with you briefly and tell you this is our last series in our Sour Beer shows, and hope you've really enjoyed these shows quite a bit. We've had some great feedback. I want to thank all the people that have written in and said how much you enjoyed this topic. We'll come back around and visit more Sour Beer shows in the future. We hope to get a lot of funky people on to talk about these really funky beers. Today's show, you'll have a lot of our regular hosts back to talk about all of their favorite sour beers in our show-and-tell show, so don't miss that coming right up. Hey, before we get to that, just wanted to tell you about a lot of other great things going on here at Sip, Suds, and Smokes. If you're not taking the time to check out our contest on Facebook, you definitely should do that. Right now, we have our Magical T-Shirt Contest in flight, and you should definitely check it out. It's a really easy contest to enter. And a lot of great benefits if you win or just having a great t-shirt to wear around town. So magical t-shirts are kind of a new concept. So uh, it's pretty easy. Just wear one of these t-shirts. And if one of our co-hosts, and we have a bunch of them all across the world, and a whole bunch of them definitely here in the U.S., they catch you wearing one of these magical t-shirts in a bar or wine bar or cigar bar or liquor store or some other place like that, they have the option to come up and introduce themselves and say, Hey, thanks for wearing a magical t-shirt. And most importantly, I'll pick up the tab right there on the spot. I can't think of anything more magical than that. So it's pretty easy to enter. All you have to do is first you have to know the magical words. Abracadabra! But after you know those magical words... <laughs> Log on to our Facebook site. Check out all the rules right there on, on Facebook. It's pretty easy to enter. Just uh, log into uh, iTunes or Spreaker or PRX. Rate our show. Leave a comment. Drop us a note to sipsudsandsmokes at gmail.com. Let us know you dropped a comment on there and copy a, a posting uh, on your email. We'll select one lucky winner every week for the next six weeks. And guess what? We even have something better than that. And for my next trick... Soaring the lady in half. I know. You can't contain yourself thinking that it could possibly get better than somebody picking up the tab. But it does. So we're going to GABF, the Great American Beer Festival in Denver, Colorado in October. I'm really happy to say that... Reverend Mark and I are going to both going to be there. Reverend Mark is actually going back and competing in the Pro-Am division for the fifth time. I can't think of a finer event to celebrate both one of our hosts competing at that event as well as taking on one of our lucky listeners for one evening at GABF. That's right. It's dead sold out. You can't buy a ticket. <laughs> but guess what? It's pretty easy. All you have to do is enroll or uh, enter to uh, get a magical t-shirt rank our show and you're entered to win a chance to meet us at gabf as well as spending a great time at the festival itself so there you have it you have to know the magical words abracadabra enter to win on itunes spreaker or prx and drop us an email it's that easy all right well enough of that i'm sure you're just dying to get to these sour beers so with that uh, thank you for listening to our show and ask you to keep on sipping. Suds, suds, suds. It's time for more suds. Hello and welcome to another suds episode. I am your host, good old boy Mike. Joining me for this episode today is good old boy Dave. Thanks for having me. Good old gal, Juliana. Hi, guys. And Reverend Mark. Howdy. This is a uh, another episode with sour beers uh, we're going to be tasting today. This is a show-and-tell uh, episode as well, where each of us has brought a beer to taste, and each person will be 
talking about what they've brought to the table and sharing all about those particular beers. Our sud segments are all about beer, beer, and definitely more beer. We'll be tasting and discussing these beers and rating them with beer ratings, plus our signature belch sounds. Here are those ratings now, if you're not quite familiar with them. Number one is, that sucks, give me anything but a bud. Number two, was that a belch? Number three, ah, what a relief. Number four, a body should really not make that sound. And our all-time favorite is number five, listen to that hang time, give me another. So those are our ratings here on Sip, Suds, and Smokes for Suds. Uh, it's so great that we... Uh, I love our show-and-tell shows. Mainly because I have no idea what anybody's bringing. So I have, like, no conception about what these beers are going to be like. And I am just <laughs> just so thrilled about what everybody brought, um, the quality of these beers, and the, the wide variety of them. Uh, these are definitely not one-size-fits-all uh, by any means. So... With that, uh, first up, we're going to talk about uh, the beer that Dave brought. Thanks, Mike. Uh, well, today I brought Sour in the Rye, a sour rye ale aged in oak barrels from the brewery. It's uh, 40% rye. It's, a, what do we say, about 8.7% alcohol by volume. Kind of like that. And uh, it's the beer that's aged in oak barrels for about a year. <clears throat> Um, this is a sour beer. I mean, it's not blow your mind, make you pucker up and your lips fall off sour, but it is everything you want in a sour beer. Mm. Um, I love rye, first off. Mm -hmm. I love rye beer, I love rye whiskey, I love, even love rye bread. Um, don't really like rye cooter, but, you know, music's a whole other, <laughs> that's a whole other show, right? Um... This beer, you know, the, in the nose, I get hints of the oak from where it was stored in the barrels. You know, a little bit of the vanilla, um, a little bit of that softness. But then when you drink it, the first thing you get is the sour. And then it moves into, like, the pepperiness of the rye. Um, and then, but then I can tell, again, that it was aged in oak because it softens at the very end, kind of rounds out, mellows out a little bit. So this beer, like, takes you on a roller coaster ride every time you drink it you couldn't do pints of it but you could definitely this is a sipping mm -hmm. and discussing beer yeah you know? definitely mm -hmm. uh, so what's your suds rating on this i would give this beer a solid four four uh, mm. uh, a body should really not make that sound good old gal juliana what do you think of the brewery sour in the rye loved it i'm a big fan of rye as well and um, was looking forward to having this beer. Uh, I thought it was really flavorful, really sour, but not overly. And um, the rye came through with that pepperiness that I really enjoyed. And like you guys were saying, um, we need Reverend Mark as the beer whisperer to help us with this one. Because <laughs> this is a good sipping mm -hmm. um, beer. Talking to beer. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Talk yeah. to it. Tell your life story. Mm. And, <laughs> it, and it opens up as it warms up. So, mm. uh, yeah, I'm sure it could mm. tell you some tales as well. So what's your size rating on this? I'm a four as well. A four as well. Uh, Body should really not make that sound. Reverend Mark, what do you think of the brewery Sour mm. in the Rye? Well, my, my tasty notes begin with a question, would like to know the rye content. And then Juliana went into the, the, um, the spec sheet on um, the grist and that it's 40%, which is, is high. And I thought so, and I like that. You either, <laughs> you either like rye, kind of like Dave said, or, you, or, mm -hmm. or maybe you don't. Uh, for me, you know, again, my second line is dry, peppery, and I believe uh, a rye beer, especially one with this much rye in the grist, creates a really good base malt uh, that allows the sour to take flight. Mm -hmm. It really, really does. This is uh, taking sour beer in a new direction. I mean, typically, you know, your sour beers are, are just a, a fairly low, mid to lower gravity kind of wheat beers. And uh, this is a little higher alcohol content. It has that that um, 
layer of, uh, of spice that you w normally would not find, and then, of course, that it's aged in oak. I really liked it. I mean, because no one aspect of the way this beer was put together really jumped out at you. It all just sort of like was there to mm -hmm. see. So mm -hmm. I'll give it a four. Well, uh, four uh, as well. Body should really not make that sound. Well, uh, the brewery is out of uh, California, yeah. right? And uh, they actually make a lot of uh, sour beers um, at the brewery. And there's a couple of other beers that uh, we did not have, uh, in, at least in the Show and Tell series here. Um, this is the first time I've had this, and um, I am not a fan of rye beer. Um, you know, it's, it's usually too bright, I think, is right. usually the thing that always catches me about rye beer and tasting it right alongside you know regular wheat or some other underlying grain it just really takes your taste buds in a direction that you know i, I don't always really plan on it so um i thought it was uh, a bit uh a bit too tart you know mm -hmm. for me personally um it took my uh, my palate beyond what i would describe as you know acceptable tart um, and I just, it was a little difficult for me to, to approach this. I like the way that you guys described it as this is a good sipping sour, not a, not a session sour from, by any means. Um, and I think probably of the other beers that I've had in the brewery, um, probably would pick some of those over this one. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's the underlying grain or just the fact that it was so tart, my palate just couldn't kind of move beyond that. So my set rating for this is a three. Uh, what a relief. All right. So uh, that covers uh, the first beer um, for Show and Tell. Next beer for Show and Tell is going to be the beer that Reverend Mark brought. Actually, he made it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I wish I'd have brought um, <clears throat> my file on this one. I think I remember, though. It's, it's really fairly... Uh, straightforward. Um, I brewed this back in uh, 2008, bottled it in 2009. Um, just the few tasting notes that I put down, because I haven't tried this beer in about a year. I only have a few bottles left. Uh, that it's a little oxidized, but that's okay. That's another thing about Lambics, is that if you get oxidation going um, that's not going to ding you in any way with a, with a beer evaluation uh, so that's okay uh, and I think it you know it so far it's sort of withstood the test of time now I, I can't refrigerate all my beers so I made this one a little higher gravity than what a lambic you know traditionally is so it's more of like a seven percent maybe six to seven percent uh, but essentially, this was a uh, uh, a wheat um, Belgian style beer that, uh, in the primary, I used a uh, an Abbey yeast, and then in the secondary is when I add the Brettanomyces, Lactobacillus, and all that, the uh, lambic blend into the secondary, and at that point added my crab apples. Now, a good friend of mine uh, harvested two different varieties of crab apples. Um, one is the kind that you see all the time that are just a little kind of cherry shaped crab apples that are extremely tart and then he had another variety that he had actually cultivated that were kind of pear shaped and uh, so I basically took about four pounds of each and uh, I didn't puree them but I kind of chopped them coarsely in a, a food processor and put them in a muslin bag and just let them steep in my secondary with all the the bugs in there mm. for several months and of course you got the tall pellicle in there you know just the mold and um, I find working with lambics I don't do it that often but I always find it to be fun I just uh -huh. find it to be fun come on and, kids let's go play with the mold yeah. in the bag <laughs> <laughs> uh, it attenuated very well and um, you know like I say I'm glad to be able to share it with friends because, you know, typically I don't crack open a 22-ounce bottle of, uh, of Lambic, you know, even the Lambic that I've made that often. Mm. So, anyway. So uh, what are your tasting notes to, around this? What's that? What are your tasting notes around this? Well, I found that, it, it, that, that the, uh, the crab apple was still uh, there. It was 
maybe a little faint, uh, but there was some residual sweetness, at least from 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 the uh, fruit. Um, I don't know. It's my beer, so I'm, I'm not going. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not really going to give it. I, I. I think maybe I should just sort of uh, claim neutrality on this one. Say He's I don't, going for I don't, the Switzerland move. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That, yeah, I am. I don't, don't know punch. that I should give it a score because it's sort of my beer. So uh, All right. I think it's. I think it's fine. I'm glad. I think it's still standing up okay. All right. Well, why don't you listen to us uh, rip it apart then? No, go that. ahead. I We're mean, definitely. About I, to you're not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, so, Reverend Mark's Crab Apple uh, Lambic, uh, my tasting notes around this, I, I absolutely love the apple tart. Uh, you know, we've had uh, a lot of beer, and this was the first one that really presented uh, apple, um, as opposed to cherries or, you know, just straight up sugar or, you know, just flat out just a, a tart, you know, style. I liked it. It was very well balanced. Um, in fact, what I wrote down was um, it reminded me of some Granny Smith cider, mm. but it was much more buttery um, than that. And uh, I, I just uh, I thought it was knockout. I mean, I just I uh, uh, I've never had anything like this, and I'm just I'm really feel privileged that you brought this today. My size rating for Reverend Mark's uh, Crab Elbow Lampic is going to be a four. Uh, a body uh, should really not make that sound. So, good old boy Dave. Well, I really liked it too. Um, and and I'm not, not just, saying that just because yeah, he said that. Yeah, yeah, for me, you know. Yeah. But um, no, I think Mark tends to show with his beers what we were saying about how. A lot of times there are things that you cannot do on a macro level. You know, if you do small, controlled batches... True, we're all nodding our heads, yeah. You can really create special flavors. Now, if you hadn't told me that it was crab apples, and I couldn't honestly couldn't tell you what a crab apple versus a regular apple tastes like, but I knew there was apple there, um, and it comes in on the end. But it's very smooth. I didn't really get a lot of oxidation, um, but uh, I... I think it was a very smooth, very nice, drinkable lambic. This is one that we could call an introductory lambic too, because mm-hmm. anybody could sit there and sip on this beer and not feel like it was too tart. But I think I like to hog it for myself. I don't sure. want to share this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably got a key to Mark's basement. So you <laughs> probably you know. <laughs> But I would, I would give this a four as well. Oh wow! Wow! Oh, wow. I should really oh. not make that sound. Good old gal, Juliana. What do you think of Reverend Mark's Crab Apple Lambic? Thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you. Because you know how you, we were talking earlier about um, different flavors, you know, and smells are going to bring you back. Well, just like music, you know, will take you back to a certain time. Hmm. So this takes me back to when I was little, when I would go over to my grandmother's house, which was in a couple towns away from where I grew up. Um, she had four crab apple trees in the backyard and she made this kick-ass apple pie with cheddar and that's what it just brought me right back and Mm -hmm. i just was like this little kid sitting on the kitchen table waiting patiently or not so patiently for a slice of that pie um because it's the apple is very distinctive but i got this butteriness at the end which i thought was great um, and, you know, just took me back to that cheddar cheese on top. So mm. um, it's a really good Lambic. Mm. Keep doing what you're doing. Well, so, I was so glad to share it with friends of this caliber. <laughs> so what's your suds rating on this? Oh, I'm a good four with this. Uh, all right. Well, there you have it all the way around, Reverend Mark. So even though you're uh, you're going to take the Switzerland move, uh, it rocked. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... All right, uh, next up in our show and tell series is going to be a beer from Evil Twin. And Juliana brought this. So, me being the girl of the group and, you know, trying to compete with with you guys, um, (laughs) I wanted to find something that was a little different. Um, And the name, of course, lends itself to, you know, something that starts off kind of girly and, you know, comes out with a little sharp edge at the end. She had a dark side. (laughs) <laughs> different different show <laughs> he's switzerland he's switzerland he's switzerland i was gonna say did this become dr phil all right, <laughs> I'm sorry. anyways um 
I, they I wanted, don't know the color of this beer, which is it's very dark. Yeah. So, Hell yeah. 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 Um, yes, wrong. it is a an American black ale, which has a little twist. So the cool thing about Evil Twins is that they are from Denmark, but um, they contract brew in various places. This particular place um, is Brooklyn for this beer. And it's an American black ale. However, it's brewed with 100% bread. So, you you want it, it wants to be an American ale, a traditional. It's kind of hoppy, but the thing about using 100% bread is it can go bad um, if you don't do it right. But to me, this does it right. Mm. And it's everything that I wanted in a beer. So, Evil Twin is uh, Denmark, you said, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, so what is your suds rating on this beer, then? I'm giving it a four. A four? Wow. Uh, Body should really not make that sound. Reverend Mark, what do you think of Evil Twin? I think this is one of those very interesting sort of experimental beers. You know, we've talked about this in, a, in another segment, uh, you know, where American, um, and, and it's now, I mean, it's international, where there's this this melding of of different traditional styles into hybrid kinds of styles and i think that they pulled this off very well uh i my sense is that what i on the at least the front end i experienced more of the the black uh ipa kind of uh hop forward um and yet clean the thing about you know the 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 black ipa is that you're using a debittered malt and so you don't really, you know, you get a, a little bit of a roasty character, but really it's very, very faint. And they so they stay true to that. But that's a very different kind of flavor profile than you would normally expect from any kind of a sour beer. I, again, I didn't realize that it was all Brett uh, in the fermentation. And I'm really surprised that it's not more Brett forward than it turned out to be. So I think it's really interesting, you know, given probably the hop schedule that they used in this and um, the fact that you know it's it may have been brewed I guess with a with more of an American malt base um, even though this strays very far from the sort of brew to style you know sort of maxim mm-hmm. I think that you know from time to time that's that's a fun thing and even a necessary thing to do so uh you know i think they pulled it off very well it's not overly sour we're we're evaluating beers within a kind of a sour um kind of flavor profile sort of standard um but i'll give it between a three and a four Mm. all right we're gonna give it a three then ah what a relief So, Evil Twin from Denmark. Uh, My tasting notes are, uh, wow, this is uber different. Um, I think uber is a Denmark word, right? (laughs) I think you're safe. (laughs) I can put the little two little dots over it and uber. The (laughs) uber. Uber Uber different. Um, You know, just uh, layers and layers and layers of flavor. Um, And it definitely reminds me of a lot of beers that we've had that usually you can only achieve that type of flavor with components of aging or blending and i really don't think that either one of those are really present in this this just really struck me as really good beer making Mm -hmm. more than anything um if i had to classify it i would say that it's a sour porter um Mm -hmm. is usually how that's how i would have described this there's probably some baltic porters that we've had that if you would probably turn that Baltic Porter and added um, Brett to it, I would say that it would be at least within the style of this beer. But I don't believe that uh, it would have nearly have achieved uh, the layers of flavor uh, just alone by just adding Brett in it. And so I thought it was really great beer making. Um, I got kind of a slight cola. Um, you know taste to it as well awesome nose i just thought it it smelled great very different beer uber different i loved it i'm so glad you brought this um you know if all the women that we invited to every show brought stuff like this rock on they're all (laughs) next women all women's show next show um 
So my sedge rating for uh, Evil Twin is going to be four. Uh, uh, A body uh, should really not make that sound. Nice. Good old boy Dave, what do you think of Evil Twin Denmark? Well, the, if I had to describe it in one word, it would be balanced. Hmm. Um, but when you smell it, it's hoppy. When you first taste it, it's roasty. Mm. And then at the very end comes some sour. Mm. So if you if you didn't it's say... It's like a menu of flavors. Yeah. If you didn't say mm. right off the bat that it was a Brett beer, you might not even really know it. Because you might just enjoy the roasty and hoppy balance between those two that comes through. But if you're looking for it, you get that little bit of sour right on the tail end of the flavor. So it's a really cool beer. Um, I would give this one a solid three. Solid three. Mm. Ah, what a relief. Well, there you have it for uh, Evil Twin. Juliana, thanks for uh, bringing that. Uh, I was really uh, just uh, I loved it in the mix. <laughs> it's just such an awesome flight. Well, with that, uh, we'll talk about the uh, beer that I brought to show and tell today, uh, which is Ode uh, Gouze Tilquin Al Ancien. Uh, yeah, Gouze! Um, <coughs> throwing your hands up. Uh, and so this beer is uh, from Belgium. Uh, Rec Rogon, I think is how you pronounce it. It is Lambic style and Gouze. Um, this is at 6% ABV. Um, it has good distribution. You can find it. Um, although you got to know somebody in a secret handshake. And, you know, even on top of that, it's a little on the pricey side. It does come uh, usually only in a bottle here in the States. I have not seen this on tap anywhere. I think what is unique to this particular bottle of Gouze is it's actually a blend. And um, I think... You know, this is one of the things that I've talked about in some other shows that one of the exciting aspects of the craft beer movement, at least in the U.S. right right now, is I'm seeing that there are brewers that are approaching uh, winemaking skills of blending beer. And uh, this is not for the faint of heart uh, by any chance. And to blend beers, uh, especially that have been aged or that may have flavor profiles that don't complement each other, you know, nearly as well. Uh, we had talked about, uh, you know, on a, on a different show um, about the crack that had been infused with uh, golden lager, and that was a good example of where right idea, wrong result. This is a great example of where somebody has really gone to heart of taking really great lambic beers from you know multiple different batches and just done a really fabulous job of uh, blending and I just really uh, I I love the complexity of all the flavors that it brought to the table I thought it was just everything that was like the top of the quan for Guze I mean I just really um, thought that uh, of all of the ones that I know that have been blended this is definitely the one that I've probably enjoyed in a blended variety I thought it was on the lower edge of being tart um, but it just was an all-around, just a rock-solid, great blended uh, Lambic. My sedge rating for this is going to be a four. Uh, <clears throat> my body should really not make that sound. Good old boy Dave, what do you think about the Gouze t- uh, Tilquin? Well, I think you're right on right on the money with the, the Gouze, because what they do is they'll make several batches over the course of two or three years, and they'll mix the three-year-old with some two-year-old with some 18 month old <clears throat> and the um, the older beer has been aging you know in barrels and things and so what it does is it softens that new beer and that's what they're trying to do is keep that acidity and the and the tartness and the sourness of that new beer but just round off the edges and give some complexity to the flavor and this beer captures that 100% mm-hmm. um this is, a, if you want to know what a gouze tastes like, look for this beer and find it and drink it. Um, I would, as far as a gouze goes, I'm going to go ahead and give it a five. Oh, oh I'm sorry, five. <laughs> five. Body, listen to that hang time. Give me another. Amazing. Good old gal Juliana, what do you think of the Oud Gouze Tilquin? I think this is a really good ending to our sour flights that we've had for the day. Um, 
really good balanced beer. I, I mean, there's enough sourness there's you know the bit of tart but i'm still getting a good rounded uh, rounded flavor at the end um if that makes any sense and just really enjoying it Hmm. from beginning to end yeah so what's your suds rating on this then giving this a four four Uh, Mm, the body should really not make that sound reverend mark what'd you think of the ode goose tilquin Initially, I compared it to the Boone. Uh, it's similar, yet a little better. Uh, like the Boone, it was uh, not too t- terribly aggressive uh, with the Gouze. You know, just sort of uh, it didn't it didn't just like attack and defeat your palate. Um, it demanded slow, deliberate sips. Uh, a little bit of puckering as you went along, but you always wanted to come back for another sip. Uh, I've had several over the years gouzes that just maybe they were just like the uber gouze, and and it was just I could only maybe take in a six six ounces, and it was just like that's as much as I can stand without mm. at least some other food to to um, balance it out, kind of balance yeah. it out. So I, I think this was, of, of, of all the gouzes that we have tried here today, it was the best. Um, I think it would be one that, would, that I would recommend to people who are just trying to sort of introduce, you know, their palate to this kind of beer. Um, mm. It's challenging, but not defeating. Huh. Uh, so nice. I like that. So, yeah. yeah, we're all nodding our head. Yeah. Yeah. Challenging perfect. but not defeating. Uh, I think that's a great way of uh, summarizing this beer for sure. So I give it a, uh, easily a four. A four. Uh, uh, a body should really not make that sound. Well, there you have it. So uh, we have a few minutes left here. Um, so I'd love to know, uh, out of the four beers, uh, what each of you like. I'm going to start with Juliana here. Well, I hate to sound like a dork, but I'm going with mine, the Femme oh. Fatale. No. Oh. Just because, I, you know, going, I haven't tried it. I heard about it, and it was it was better than I expected. So and the it, evil twin definitely does yep, it for you. that's me. Mm-hmm. Reverend Mark, what was your choice? Well, again, I'm claiming, claiming neutrality, neutrality on my beer. Um, and I thought it was fine. Uh, so I'm not I'm not downgrading myself. But actually, my favorite, uh, even though I know I've just um, was very um, complimentary and it was all sincere about the gouze I liked the uh, the, the, the sour rye I mm. just to me that was my favorite huh interesting well uh, my favorite uh, was Reverend Mark's crab apple lamic I'm sorry but I just thought it was <laughs> awesome you know, I don't know if I'm just oh. a uh, <laughs> you know we've not had any apple tart today and I don't know what was just hitting my palate but it was just that buttery thing on the mm. back end that just you know really got to me and uh, the evil twin was awesome I mean it's difficult to even for me to choose between the two but I have to give it up for Reverend Mark's crab apple lambic and the only thing I'm pissed about is we only have the one bottle so <laughs> i think i have a few more at home all right well <laughs> we'll use the secret handshake and make sure we'll uh, get some more of that but uh, i just thought oh that was awesome mark i mean i just uh you know it was really great uh how about you dave what do you think well you know it, it's so hard because they're all this was one of the better flights that we've done you know and they're all very close but i have to say the guze is the one I think we finished off with a great beer so mm. that's the one I would pick well uh, thank you all for uh, you know bringing some really great beers to the show and tell uh, episode here it was just another great example of you're not just great brewers but you're uh, good consumers and you know certainly we were even tasting some stuff blind today and um, so it was really great that um, just the quality of all the stuff here in the show and tell uh, episode as well I want to thank my co-hosts for joining me. Dave, thank you. Thank you. It was great. Juliana, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And Reverend Mark. Cheers. Let's go to boy Mike. I'm going to ask you to join us once again and keep on sipping.
This has been a One Tan Hand production of Sip Suds and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.